Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to have a look at questions 24 to 26 of section 3 of the Purple Booklet. This is about genetic inheritance of deaf mute genes. There's two independent genes we're going to have a look at, and I've drawn out the relevant part of the diagram. The first question says, a line that is missing from the table is... So looking at the table, you can see that the only thing missing is a combination of all the lowercase letters, meaning that the answer has to be B. Number 25 says that the deaf mute phenotype occurs whenever. And you can see from the table that this is going to be a recessive problem. And we also get from the stem that they're two independent genes. So looking at when the phenotype is normal and when it's deaf mute, you can see that it occurs only when there is a homozygous recessive pair of either of the genes, either D or E. So for the question, that says that the answer has to be D, where both of the recessive alleles of one of the genes occurs. And you can check in the table that A, B, and C are wrong. And answer for 25 is definitely D. Now, number 26 is a little bit more involved. Which of the following genes, or which of the following gives the most likely genotypes of individual 8 of generation 3 and individual 9 of generation 3? So I've drawn out the relevant bit of the diagram here. And let's talk about what would happen in each of the scenarios. Before we get into that, what are we looking at? We're looking at two affected individuals having all normal children. That's a really important point. So let's have a look at these possibilities and see if that would actually make sense and which is the most likely. So option A says that they're both going to be heterozygous for both genes. Well, we know from the previous question that both recessive alleles of one of the genes occurring leads to the deaf mute phenotype. Given that the parents are both deaf mute, you know, they'd both have to have at least two copies of the recessive gene of each of the genes or of either of the genes. So we know that A cannot be true because they would end up um, with a normal phenotype. What about B? If they were both recessive for D and dominant for E, well, the children wouldn't all be normal because there is a chance that the children could um, well, would definitely inherit two copies of the recessive allele for D, meaning that all the children would not be normal. So we know that this isn't the case either. What about option C, which is one that is recessive for D and dominant for E, and then the opposite for the other parent? Well, in that case, you would end up with children that have a mix of alleles that looks like this. And we know from option A that that would lead to the normal phenotype. And all the children are normal. And it also means that parents with these genotypes would have the deaf mute phenotype, as we can see in individuals eight and nine. So this makes sense feasibly because it would allow the parents to be affected and all the children to be normal, which is what we see in the diagram. So this is a very likely option. But just to rule it out, let's talk about question or option D, which is heterozygous for D and homozygous recessive for E and then essentially opposite for the other parent which is homozygous recessive for D and heterozygous for E. Well again we have this common possibility that you could get a recessive copy of both for either gene so some of the children in theory could end up with this genotype meaning that they would be um, deaf mute. But it also means that there's a possibility for this phenotype and the possibility for this phenotype. And these individuals would end up being deaf mute, but we see that all the children are normal. So while it is, of course, um, a possibility for the child to be completely heterozygous, it's not likely in this case. So this is not the likeliest option. So we can say that the answer for 26 is most likely to be C. I hope that helped.